Welcome back. We're still doing some bonding stuff around here on the Macabre. And I'm very intrigued about what's in this suitcase right here. And what the flowers are about, so... Let's speak to Princess Elfin. What's with the flowers in the suitcase, Your Highness? Oh, I'm just preparing myself, is all. I was wondering if we could make a stop by Ulster, once the opportunity allows. I see. Prince Oliver's childhood hometown. A state funeral for the victim has already been performed in Heimdall. Their remains, however, were completely incinerated. Though the grave itself is quite extravagant, it's actually empty. No matter how I thought about it, I just couldn't picture my brother's soul lying to rest there. I'd just like to go back to his old home just once to lay some flowers there. Your Highness. Oh, it's just a personal whim of mine, really. We can talk more about it when the time is right. I should instead be thinking of what kind of contributions I can make for the ship, shouldn't I? Remember, I'm a member of the crew before I'm a princess. Don't hesitate to assign me my fair share of work. It's Oliver's child at home, huh? Maybe I should pay my respects too. Oh yes, of course, definitely. If you're up for it, your highness, I could have Valimar, the Ashen Knight, take us there. I'd like to go pay my respects to Prince Oliver as well. Green. I would really appreciate that. Thank you. If it helps clear your mind, you can focus on the mission a bit more. It's worth doing. Reen and Alfin took Valimar, the Ashen Knight, to a remote region of Erebonia. They went down to Alster, taking care not to be conspicuous. Phew. We made it. Sorry for making you carry so much, Reen. I should hope so. My arm... I, I, oh, no. I'm, I'm glad I could help. And it's really not so much to carry, I assure you. But I think I can tell what this is just by the weight of it. I can tell just by the story. Like, come on. It's obvious what's inside. Between that and what she was talking uh, with Sandy about earlier. This is where the Lenheim household was. This is where Oliver was born and raised. I'd been wanting to make a visit, but it burned down before I could. You know, those of us in Class 7 actually did stop by, back during the Civil War. You and the others told me about it. That lightning struck it a few months ago. Could that have been some kind of omen? Anyway, I'd like to offer some flowers and pay our respects. You see, this monument is... It's... Something the matter. No, oh, someone's laid out a rose already. They must have had the same idea and got here before us. I think I know who... A black ribbon is used by the Arnor house in times of mourning. It must have been Cedric. Oh. What exactly is going through his mind? There's this, but what happened with the Crimson Wings in the first place? It thinks that he has a right to mourn Olivert? But I suppose the same could be said about me. Um, Your Highness? I asked Emma and Celine about the rivalries, Reen. If you do wind up facing off against Cedric, if you feel any pity or sympathy for him, you must bury it, even if it's a matter of life or death. Your Highness? I mean, you've always been so gentle by nature. To be honest, if you do end up fighting Cedric, I worry that your kindness could cause you to hesitate. To prevent him from doing any more damage than he already has. Princess Alfin, I'm afraid I can't allow myself to do that. When it comes to Prince Cedric, I have Kurt to consider as well. But I have to think about you, too. I'm not under the illusion that everything going forward will be anything but complicated. This is Prince Cedric that we're talking about. The twin brother and the person closest to you in a lot of ways, Your Highness. What happens with the rivalries is not set in stone. I think that the best thing is for you to think about what you yourself would like to do. You must know how I can help. I'll do anything and everything in my power to do so. 
Reen. I still have a lot to figure out. With things as they are, I think that Elise would just laugh. But it's true. With father out of commission, and with mother being held captive, I must face Cedric in place of Olivert. Even simply as his own sister, I'll think over matters carefully. I won't run away from this. It sounds like a good idea to me, Your Highness. But Cedric also offered flowers here. And that act conveys a certain sentiment. Thanks, Rain. All right. I actually had something I wanted to do here. You know that case I've been making you look around? Get it out. I'm almost sure that it was a loot. Is it? <laughs> yes, it is. Can't you tell? It's right in front of you. Most beloved souvenir from Oliver's travels to Le Burl. I've actually been taking the odd lesson here and there lately. Just might be able to hash my way through a song or two. According to Sandy, the mayor's out at the moment, so we're not pressed for time. Oh, that's good. The whole situation with the mayor sure is strange. Animals on standby, so I can't see a reason why we'd need to hurry. I would be honored if you would play for me, Your Highness. I'm a little nervous. Okay. Deep breath and... Oh, I wanted to hear more of that. Sorry, Reen. I was able to play it better early. I really was. Maybe the size is throwing me off? It really can make a big difference. I think this particular loot is a little big for most women. That was Amber or more, right? Would you mind if I play it a little too? Oh, that's right. At least mentioned you know how to play the loot. That explains why you were such a perfect lead guitar for your performance at the Academy Festival two years ago. <laughs> I suppose so. My dad gave me some lessons growing up. Well, the music's going out. I'm no virtuoso, but it's a pretty famous song. So maybe we can make our way through it. Brightly shooting stars, leaving trails in the skies. Like a guiding light, you show me the way to your eyes. This yearning passion tears my heart in twain. And the cruel moon mocks my pain. If this fleeting dream shall never be. A single wound will remain in my heart for all to see. A passionate first and final kiss. Your tears to me on amber bliss. Let us immure this eternal love. That was lovely, Reen. Really lovely. <laughs> you might even be better than Olivert. No. <laughs> Thanks, but given how often he played this loot, I'd be surprised if that were the case. Hearing this song again really takes me back, though. It really does. I used to listen to it a lot when I was little. It seems that Olivert's mother... It seems that Ariel really loved it. This song is how she expressed her feelings when she... Refused father's marriage proposal back when he was the crown prince. When you feel like I can imagine her performance for Oliver, from one of her to highs. I see. His Majesty the Emperor told me she refused his proposal. I didn't know this song played a role in it. <laughs> Looks like Olivet was filled with the same sentiment. I get the feeling that this basic ideas and emotions as people don't really change much from generation to generation. Mine as well. Hmm? I think that we'll be finding out Elise's whereabouts sooner rather than later. 
You've got to find her, Reen. Find her and bring her back. I think that fate has set this course. It's the choice of Steinsgate. <laughs> when someone is kind enough to assert that, it does make you focus in... and face what lies ahead of you. That's... that's exactly what I intend to do as well. This isn't the time to be reserved. Right here, in this situation. I'm sure that Oliver would be in total agreement if he were here. Though my thoughts regarding Cedric here are less clear. Um... Reen, I'm in love with you. I have been ever since the day you rescued me. Two years ago, on the Pantagruel. She looked different then. You may see me as nothing more than your sister's dearest friend, the Imperial Princess under whom you serve. But all I truly am deep down is a girl whose heart longs for you. I, uh... <laughs> Think that your lovely performance charmed this out of me, Reen. And you don't need to give me an answer or anything, okay? I just wanted to share how I feel about you. That a lot of things might change for you when Elise is back. And once the real battle begins, I don't think there'll be any chances like this. Your Highness. Should we be heading back to the ship, then? Still need to determine where Elise is. I actually think that I might be able to help tow her out. Rena and Alf had departed Alstaff after giving their best to Sandy in the office. They returned to the Macabre on Valimar. The princess carried the loot case on the way back, saying that she could handle it on her own now. Your bond with Alfin strengthened. You shared a special moment with Alfin. I'm in agreement with basically like a little discussion we had on Discord, where it's sort of like it's disappointing in a way that like all the like the female bonding events end up with like declarations of love. I mean, Toas didn't. Toas is the, the only one that's actually felt natural so far. Like like all the, all the guys ones so far have been like, hey, here's this story progression about my story and like this important thing and how I've changed as a person, all that type of stuff. It's like yeah, that they're, they're cool, and I like that with the um, female characters as well. But then they all top off with, oh, by the way, I love you. Apart from Toa's. Which is the one I actually like the most out of the female ones as a result. Because it, it didn't have that. It had that sentiment. It had that special moment. But I feel like the Declaration of Love should have been saved. Because obviously you got the hearts building up. That should have been saved for the final one. Because then I feel it's like, yeah, now, now it's like, make your choice for Reen. That should be the moment. They should all be like Toa's, where it's sort of like, you could see that it could go there, but it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. So it's like having this happen all over the place, it's like... Mm, it just feels a bit... Off, is the best way of putting it. Thank you for accompanying me to Alsterine. Like, that bonding event was fantastic. It built on stuff we had from, like, Trails in the Sky, we had so much about Oliver, so much about Alfin, so much about their family, how, how it operated and stuff like that. It's, like, perfectly built on everything that was there previously. Because I was thinking to myself, it's like... It was basically a really good retcon. It's like, right, this is where the song came from. This is how, how Oliver knew it and why it was so important to him. It's like, yeah, it elevated Trails in the Sky. Essentially, it's like knowing that and like looking back in my head like those moments, it elevated those moments. And then they had to top it off with, oh, by the way, I love you. It's like, you didn't need to do that. You, you didn't. And about what I said at the end, I'm not expecting an answer, so please don't trouble yourself over it. Princess Alfin, I really ought to pull my weight around here like the rest of you do. I shouldn't be standing by as a guest in our sort of circumstances. Can't just sit back and let others do all the work my whole life. See, that's that's what it should have been about. Just again, the declaration of love and stuff like that should wait for the second one. I assume it's only gonna be two each. Might be more, I don't know. But does anybody else feel that? Like discussions down in the comments, I want to see what you guys think about that. We had a little discussion on Discord about it, it's that sort of Yeah. Anyway, Kurt, mate. Hmm. 
Not too bad, if I say so myself. Doing some practice, I see. Your movements here and there felt really natural. Yeah. It surprised even me, to be honest. But I guess it's to be expected after having crossed swords with Lieutenant Colonel Nightheart. Being able to hold my ground against one of Mueller's sworn friends was a big moment for me. I could imagine. Looks like we'll have to thank uh, the Lieutenant Colonel in general for that sometime. Definitely. But maybe not quite yet. I imagine Prince Cedric is also steadily improving his skills. Maybe I should start searching for that thing Uncle Zex told me about. General Zex told him to look for something? I wonder what it could be. There we go. This thing your uncle wants you to search for. I assume there must be some big story behind it. I'd like to know more, if you wouldn't mind. I might prove useful to us later on. Sure, Instructor. I don't mind. Would you be willing to accompany me somewhere in that case? We can talk more about it on the way. You know what they could have done? Similar to what they did in Cold Steel 3, it's like, make it very, very sort of obvious to us as the player that there's two choices that Reen would have, and one would lead to friendship. It had just have a little icon, because they've got the hearts for the bonding stuff in this, where it's like, just have a little icon next to, like, one or two choices, partway through the bonding event, and it's obvious the other one's going to lead to, like, a, a love declaration, that sort of thing, the other one's going to be just friends. And then that would be fine, because then, then it doesn't seem a bit off. Because at the moment, we've got several of these love declarations, and it's like, doesn't feel right. And especially like with like someone like Altina, I, I would have gone the friendship type route. Well, you know, father-daughter type route, you know, but adopted daughter, that, that would feel more right. It's just, it feels sort of like the, the harem aspect is a bit off-putting. Is the best way of putting it. Again, thoughts and feelings down in the comments, please. Uh, Kurt briefed Reen on the item he was looking for, and the two headed out to their destination. You think this is the sword you're looking for? It must be. It matches the description. Ronan Vander was the renowned swordsman who founded the Vander School. This is one of the two legendary swords he wielded during the War of the Lions. No kidding. Ronan Vander really was an incredible swordsman, known for taking arms with a young Dracos himself 250 years ago. So this is the sword your ancestor used, huh? Indeed. It's left-handed short sword, to be precise. It's been missing since the war. My uncle reached out to me from the naval fortress. They'd apparently received word about a sword matching the description recently. You may be able to discover the essence of what it means to be a sword of protection with the blades that once belonged to Roland. What was the top secret communication he went out of his way to send to the Macabre? I think I understand. He didn't show up during the last civil war. He showed up now, when you're struggling to grow as a swordsman. Even other people would probably consider it fate. Again, the choice of Steinsky. I admit, I'm more than a little self-conscious that I may be unworthy of such an honor. Even so, this is the sword my family has spent generations searching for. As a vander, I must retrieve it. Alright, let's sort things out with the store owner. That'll be 42 billion mirror. Thanks to their friendship with Ash, the store owner, McEnroe, gave them a special prize. They got it polished in the weapon workshop, and then took it out to give it a test run. So this is the sword Roland Vander once used. How do you like it? The weight and balance are perfect. This feels like it was made for me. Of course, I'm a dual wielder. I'll need another of these if I'm going to make full use of it. What? What's going on? My head, it's like there's something surging into it. Cut! Yeah, very familiar things. 
Tricles, my lord and dearest friend, I hereby pledge myself to your cause. I will not leave your side until you accomplish your goal. This I swear upon my blades. If the power you wield should prove too much for you, I will do whatever it takes to bring you back to your senses. Even if it costs me my life, I will watch over you and the Empire. That needs some explanation. What was that? The memory stored within the sword, maybe? No. Maybe it would be more accurate to call it an echo of its owner's consciousness. In other words, you just caught a glimpse of Roland Vander's past. Again, it all goes back to this idea of like, like memories are stored. Hmm. Again, it's, it's starting to feel like Zimoni is just one big computer. Not a simulation. That's different. But a computer, like a program, like something running. Hmm. That was Roland. Unbelievable. The man himself fell during the War of the Lions. It looks like a part of his spirit remained in the sword to watch over Emperor Dracons. Yeah. Probably resonated with us due to our connection as Awakener and Secondary Contractor, and our similar relationship to Dracons and Roland. Yeah. Which again, keeps going back to that other point that I keep coming across, where it's like, Reen is so similar to Drykold's. Because it, I've got this pre prevailing theory in my head that I constantly keep coming back to, just the idea that Reen is sort of Drykold's. But I don't think it's Reen who's Drykold's. I think it's a certain thing inside his chest that represents Drykold's, because you know the whole Japanese idea of the soul in the heart and all that type of stuff. Very much learnt that in Persona 4. But, just, just this idea that, so it's like, the soul of Dracul's was essentially in the heart, which means that Dracul's soul was in Osborne. Gilead Osborne. And that's probably one of the reasons something came to him that was mentioned in the Black Records. Now, I want to go into it more at some point, but I have said it on Discord. I think yesterday I said it on Discord, didn't I? Like, just that idea of what I think's going on with um, the whole Dreykels and the whole Gilly of Osborne and where I think his story's going and I think this sort of like ties into that idea so it's like yes I'm very much on board with what Reen's saying here because it fits with what I'm thinking anyway I see a piece of Roland's soul huh never thought I'd get to feel connected to my ancestor in such a manner Can't let him outdo me. As a vendor, I owe it to my family and myself to overcome this trial. I'll open in Prince Cedric's eyes to the truth, just like Roland would have done to Dracles. If you as my witness, I swear it upon this blade. Inspiring words, Kurt. I'll be counting on you. Kurt and Reen continue to train before returning to the Macabre. Kurt decided to keep a hold of the sword until its partner could be found. Yeah, I'm imagining that's going to be his next bonding event. Which would be interesting to see what happens then. Hey Kurt, uh, not feeling too worn out, I hope? Far from it. Thank you for offering your support, Instructor. The time to live up to the Vanden name and fulfill my oath is now. I must rise up to the challenge. It's great. I'll be counting on you. Let's actually discuss that, that theory now, because I, I feel like it's important going forward, and we're not going to do the growl or anything like that, and we have got the black records around, and there's a certain one I'm after. Uh, da, 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 da. It's not that one. Which one was it? It's not them. Which which black records was it? That's, that's the one I, I'm after. Nope. Try the other side. No. I've got to find it. It's important to what I mean. I think this is it. I think... Two shadows wavered in the corner of the underground room. Two shadows? I don't remember two shadows. That's not the Lance Maiden. That's not the one I want. Magic Knight. No. Dark Dragon. Founding of Heimdall. 
It's not them. There's definitely definitely one that I'm after. Let let let, let me go let me go search it by, by basically booting up like Cold Steel 3 and go and finding it and then talk about it here at the same time. I have to do it on the laptop properly. It'll work out. Be back in just a second. So the idea in my head is basically based on the idea of what we saw happening with now, now Gilead Osborne with the trade conference and how he seemed to be helping the SSS in a strange way. I talked about it when we were there, just the idea of he was egging them on, wanting them to rise and wanting to have that power, wanting to have that strength to face off against what was coming. And it can take that two different ways, the idea of like, He's gloating and being very much like, ha ha ha, we're gonna take over Crossbell and all that type of stuff. Or, he's trying to like build sort of like something against him. Okay. Let me, yeah, okay. It's just the idea of like, maybe he's done that with Reen, maybe he's done that with Oliver. He's, he's trying to just inspire people to rise up against his plans. Now, why would he do that? Well, my thought is like, based on everything that was said in stuff like Cold Steel 3, then we had, like, that talk with, like, um, Craig and stuff like that. Just the idea that he seemed to be a different man before the incident with Reen and the heart and all that type of stuff. He seemed to be a more honourable man, the best way of putting it, like, how it was described. But we know in that event where it's like Reen was basically going to die and his heart was screwed up, that... Osborne basically called out to Adios or anything to save his son. So he basically sold his soul to the devil. What would come forward? The Great One would come forward and be like, Hey, I could save your son if you work for me. And I feel like that's what he's done. So I feel like where the story is going is this idea of like, not that Osborne's going to be redeemed. I don't feel like it's that sort of thing, like, it's not gonna be like, well, he wasn't actually doing what he wanted to do anyway. It's like, no, he's working within the confines of what he can to sort of, like, help us undo the plans that he's unwittingly having to be a part of. Like, sure, he's, he's put everything in place, so, like, this is happening. This entire thing is happening. There's, like, the twilight and all that type of stuff. He's made that happen through other people and stuff like that but he's working from the inside of that plan from the great one to help Reen, to help Oliver, to help anyone like the SSS and stuff like that to make them rise up and I've maybe even partly that's what he was doing as part of um like his plans down in Le Burl and stuff like that like when he went to visit and stuff like that just just to spark stuff and you know the whole connection with the orbital shutdown phenomena, all that type of stuff, just all little things like making people come around to try and stop him. That's what I think's going on there. But why I need the black records, it's like, well why would out of everyone the great one target Gilif Osborne? Why? Like, he was just a soldier at that point. He, he wasn't the Chancellor. He wasn't an important person. He became that at a later date. So then it ties into my other theories of, like, the, the Reen's memories and stuff of Drykels and stuff like that. And it's like, I feel that's connected through his heart and that connection to Drykels. And he got his heart from Osborne. So then you look at Black Records number four, I think in Cold Steel... Um, I was going to say four, in three. And if it's number four, it's like, it's not number four here, is it? No, because that's the Magic Knights. Which is very strange. But anyway, yeah, it goes on about how there was this um, nameless dark in the corner. Now it came to speak to him again, the strike was this, begging pathetically, threatening with intimidation. Intimidation, even. Subtle and inviting. It's like it wanted him. It wanted dry calls. Something was there and it was going to maybe affect his children, and he was waiting for Idios to take him. So in my head, it's like maybe somehow that's the connection there to dry calls. Like it's 
it's found him again in Osborne. If that makes any sense. That's what I'm going with in my head right now. How that works out and everything, I don't really know. And I've just become very confused by the reflection in this place. That, that's it for the theory, by the way. I'm just confused by the reflection, specifically because it's like... If you look at these, like, like this cupboard, right, right in front of Reen's head right now, look at the reflection. Like, where's that? Like, you can see, like, the, um... Symbol of the church. Reflected. But it's like, where... Okay. Where is that? Because it's not on the what. Where's, where's that? Like, usually they have, like, a... A reflection box is the best way of putting it. Like, they reflect certain things, isn't it? Where is that on the wall? Like, there's, there's not... One on the wall anywhere. So what's that reflecting? Like, it's like I'm trying to look at the reflection, see if there's sort of like a... An idea of where this room, like, the reflection is. Is it upstairs? Like, maybe? I don't know. That's very strange. But anyway, we're, we're, we're gonna end this part here now. I had to get that theory out of the way. It's like, it's, it's still got a lot of holes to fill in, but it's like, that's the general feeling I'm getting from... What's happening so far and what's been told across the series, basically. Yeah. So anyway, next part, let's see about getting some quests done and maybe some rounds out and about. So, see you in the next part. Ta-da for now.